Hey everybody, good morning, it's Chris Yost here, Wesley, and I hope you got your hot cup of coffee, hot cup of cocoa, um, I don't know about y'all, I needed this Christmas week, and I am so thrilled to get to read this story with you, and uh, we're going to pick up in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 45, uh, listen for a good word. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a, virgin, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will, will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The then the angel departed from her. Friends, uh, this theophany, or actually it's not a theophany, it's an angel appearance, um, really sets the tone for us. Um, it, it reminds us of how uniquely... Um, timed in human history, this intervention of God truly is. Uh, the hard part I've found with it is it's hard to wrap my mind around this. Um, you know, some of you have heard me preach for a while know that uh, on one hand, it has to be the most stirring experience, and on the other hand, to be the most frightening experience to see the angel of the Lord. I can't imagine. Um, no wonder they always have to start off with, do not be afraid. Um, the, the, I guess you'd say the divine, the realm of the divine, that's the angelic and of course God um, and God's purity uh, presence. It is hyper real. It's, it's something beyond our comprehension and ability. And yet that hyper real is now entering into the confines of our I guess you could say three-dimensional, four-dimensional world. I know I'm nerding out on you just a little bit, <laughs> but whatever the divine is, friends, think about this. This is God entering into, you know, length, width, depth, and passage through time, the four dimensions of our, of our lives. Um, how does God confine himself like that? I, it just baffles my mind. Ultimately, the, the part that's the, the the second part that I've always struggled with is I would assume that if the angel of the Lord appeared, we would know that we're living in a moment of the holy, right? I don't think Mary left this moment not understanding something big was going on. But I will tell you that it makes it hard for us to find the holy in our common lives. How often have you or I gone through and thought, well, gosh, if God would just, you know, flash a light, I could get it. Or, man, if God would just give me a sign, then I would understand. Um, I, I get that. Uh, I share that frustration with you. And yet, as we grow in Christians, as we, as we grow in Christ as Christians, we increasingly learn to discern how extraordinarily common the immense experience of God really is. It's not heralded by angels. It's not shown by stars. It, and yet God is alive and well. Um, just recently, uh, I had preached a sermon when I talked about 
How do you explain water to a fish? Friends, I think that's what it's like for us to show each other where God is at work, right? It is so common. Our lives have its being in the very presence of God. Um, anyway, I'm just excited for this incarnation uh, celebration that we have. And tomorrow is going to be a really long reading. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to kind of read it with very little commentary. But uh, anyway, let's pray. God, thank you for this mystery. Thank you that on one hand, you could leave us in a corner of ignorance of who you are and the way that you work. You could have left us in just fearful mystery of, of who you are, but instead you chose to show us who you are. You chose to be born into the confines of human flesh, into the simplicity of everyday life. God, help us to see that incarnate experience. Help us to see where it is that you, um, well, where you continue to reveal yourself among us. God, may we be vessels of that revelation into the world around us this Christmas season. In Jesus' name, amen.